intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, and you're probably wondering, hey Rev, where's the latest flame video? I'll be completely honest with you, the past over 48 hours has been just so exhausting for me working with everybody, and I'm not complaining, that today I decided, look, we're going to put a piece of content that actually helps players progress in the game, whether they're a low-level player or a high-level player, help them get an idea of where they should be going. I felt like we're going to take that direction today, because honestly, I know tomorrow there's going to be more of this overall conversation happening about how we got to get them to fix certain things in the game, and hopefully getting response to that by the time that you've watched this video, I'll probably have announced something on Discord. So I wanted to take today to focus on that, focus on that type of content. Doesn't mean it's bad content, but if you were waiting for updates on some of the other things, like, look, today we're going to focus on actually getting better at the game. And if you have game questions, as always, in the comment section down below, drop them down what you got, and I'll be very happy to get into it with you. Today, we'll be taking a look at away teams. I haven't done this in several months, but I wanted to help you, especially if you're a low-level player or one of those higher levels who've accumulated so much trade XP from the recent you know, events we've been having and the months we've been having with the ARCs and have not decided where to spend it. I want to give you a better idea of where to go with that. So we're going to focus on away team missions. And this is something that if you're in the 20s, you can start taking notes of, start working on these, and then see where they end up going. Now, I have a couple of them running in the background, but also we're going to have some outsourcing. My Discord was very kind enough to help provide a lot of screenshots of some of their loadouts to give you a better idea. And you want to know some key officers here. What I'm going to do is similar to like what I did last time. I'm going to focus on key missions you should focus on and then explain the officers for those missions and why they're good. But before we do that, there is something that I've got to put on the screen. It is this. This is, and shout out to DJ and Ripper for putting the information together into a nice visual form. But this is the trade XP required per rank and levels of traits per officer. So if you remember, uncommon officers will have one trait. Rare officers will have two, and epic officers will have three. Now, one thing that I've talked a lot on live stream for quite a bit is I do not recommend maxing out epic trait officers unless you really just run into a lot of XP. Your goal should be to get as many of these missions that we're going to talk about today to a high level of critical success rate and then worry about maxing them out at a later time. That's how I'm approaching it. So if you can get three missions to 50%, that's better than having one mission at 100%. Now, why do I say wait on maxing out your epics? If you look over there on the chart, the third profile of, or the third trait of all these, look at right around rank six and rank seven, how those costs start to double. 23,000, 42,000, 168, 107. Now, if you actually add these up, look at the epic officer. It's gonna take you 323,000 trade XP to max out one epic, but rares max out at 37.5. But if you take away the last three spots, you see seven, eight, nine right up. If you take that away, that's about two, that's over 200,000 of that, bringing down Epic officers to a little over 100,000. So taking those to maybe rank five or rank six in their third, and then using that on other Epic officers and using that on rares is what's been most beneficial to me. And if you save over 100,000, you're gonna have basically two Epic officers to give you two different mission sets instead of just that one that's really, really good. In fact, I don't have a single officer that I've maxed out completely, but we'll show you some examples of that today. That's the strategy that I recommend. Now, here and there, there are uncommon officers that will justify you dropping resources into them and trade XP. In general, though, I only focus on epics and rares, and I will mention one uncommon officer in this video that you can use. Now, we'll also go ahead and say that the game, let's get rid of that. Bye. The game has done a good job of helping this become an easier process because if you were to click, say, rescue attempt, which is just a really basic mission. And, and just to remind, I do recommend everybody do the 4, 8, and 12 hour missions. Always run 4, 8, 12 hours because they naturally recycle to a new mission upon completion. So just to make sure you're getting as much RNG as possible, you want to make sure that you're running as many of these events as you can, as many of these away teams. So I'm going to sort by attack. You can see I can just throw up Uhura right there and and Gorkhan has a natural critical of 20%, or I can also come into the search menu and search by trade. This is something they added based on your feedback. That was great. And then you have this one where you can say, hey, I want officers that are either available, not available, meet with trades, etc." I'm not gonna put them on because we're talking about officer loadouts. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the rainbow missions. There are five missions in the game that I consider the most valuable missions that there are. There is Imperial Strategy, which is the Rainbow Romulan mission. Simply being, allowing you to get Romulan credits as a critical here. You see my loadout, I've got 70%. And that is because I focused on two officers. You'll see my Sharvenik, and then I've got one of the Duras sisters. And Duras sisters actually maxed out. You see the manipulate over there. And then you see with my 
a Charvenic that she is 4, 3, and then 3. So I haven't even finished working on leader, but it's a 70% already. So I'm not focusing too much on this one because I've already got a pretty high critical chance. And we've talked about on Twitch and on the other live streams that while it is very important to critical, you'll notice that, you know, if you start getting to 80, 90, you're not really noticing actively that improve that much. I'd rather use that XP, you know, the missions. But this is a very common loadout for me where I'm getting all four that I need and then throwing in the best health officer that I have at the time. Now, Fluffy is very important, by the way. We'll mention Fluffy in a second, but one of the most important officers in the game to me because he's connected to one of the most important missions. And I talked about there's five missions in particular that I believe are the most valuable in the game. Now, these are interchangeable in some ways. For example, the Romulan one here is one of the most important, but it depends on what factions you are. So all three of them are not necessarily as important, though they are valuable. I will go ahead and back out right now so we can take a look at some of the others. But for example, we have Imperial Strategy. You see Form Trade Agreement. It is a good one, but it has dropped a little bit out of my top five because of some of the others that we have that can get Latinum. But this is a fantastic way for all players to get Latinum, and I understand if it's in your top five. So in particular for me, I have got Imperial Strategy, then one of my top fives. And I've got the Address the High Council. This is one of my top fives. Now, if you're curious what the Address the High Council is, it is this one. Address the High Council is the Klingon version of what we just saw with the Romulans. And then the Federation version is Research and Development, where we have Carol Marcus. So the three officers that we're talking about focusing on so far, Jarvanik, Gorkon, Carol Marcus. Those are giving you those three rainbow missions. Now, if you are a player who is already fed aligned, you might not need research and development as much as I do, but because you need more Federation credits to upgrade officers than any of the others right now, this is a very important mission to run. And you see this setup right here is at 75%. Now, Carol's important, but you can also use Kirk in several different missions because of the charismatic trait that he has in the top right over there. Charismatic having a lot of value in the game. So going after that is something I would recommend. Look into charismatic because you're going to use that in several different places, whereas I'd only use Spock for a actual stat stack. And that would be the top three rainbow missions for faction base. Uh, you can kind of move those in and, in, in and out of your top five. Now, the next here for me, I'm gonna throw this one up on the screen. This is a consideration. This is a multi-day mission. Now it maxes out at 60%, but the cool thing with this one is you can get it with very, very low tier officers. You can see Azenber here. Now we'll point out that Gorkon has the Chancellor trait. So you, you see the traits over there we need is Chancellor. Well, Gorkon has the same thing. See Gorkon right here, Chancellor. However, you're probably going to be getting these at the same time or running them at different times or maybe even using an officer. So as is a great rare to throw in. And if you remember the price of the rares, they're not that expensive to upgrade and max, thus giving you an easier way to complete this max percentage to get you the credits as well as a big rep boost. So these multi-day missions, you probably don't want to send the epics out on, but would rather send some of the rares out. And as I said, you want to focus on it from the value standpoint of how much trade XP am I investing and what am I getting in return? Well, 105,000 just for this one, because obviously this is stat stacking. But 105,000 of the away team currency plus 800,000 rep and 2,000 faction credits has a ton of value. I realize that this will vary player to player based on what level you are, etc. But still, obvious value. Next up, this is, for me, a top five mission, one of the most important in the game, and this is exactly how I have mine loaded out for collective bargaining. Only on collective bargaining, what I did is I maxed out Fluffy, Assimilated, and Minor because there is no four slot, and they do everything. And this is exactly how my Fluffy is. My Fluffy is at six. I get 67%, and that is enough to give me the amount of value that you see in the picture behind here. But it doesn't really matter what I use next, too. It's just about stat stacking health, Charvenic being a primary health officer and then live us in that same argument so a lot of value in that and that's kind of helping you round out my tops now that's not the only tops i have by the way because i've only mentioned four in my personal top five technically i've mentioned five if we count foreign trade agreement but that's one of those that you can interchange this in and out depending on where you're at for me with the devore and the fecia i'm getting so much latinum every day plus from the events i have like parabellum and that latinum it, that mission, form trade agreement, this would be more important for me if I was still in the 20s and 30s. In the 40s, it's not as important for me, but I will still cover it. I will go ahead and tell you that regardless of level, one of the most important ones is at the very top right here, Lead Expedition. Now, this is my Lead Expedition run where I'm running Nero, Pan, Kirk. Remember Kirk? I talked about it being one that you're probably going to keep using. Well, here's an example of Kirk. 
back out in it again. Herc is one of those cards that is used on several different. You see the Captain, the Charismatic, and then Impulsive. While he's an Epic, and that is a lot of XP that we're talking about right there, you're using it for multiple missions to find value. For me, this is important because away team credits is one of the ways that I source ship parts. And when you talk about the price tags of some of these 40 ships and even the epics, this is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of resources, and jump you forward in the game if you're focusing in on this. Nero being the one I focus on the first. Now, the reason that I really like this one, and you can start on this early, is all three of these officers that are on my screen can be had at level 20 or below. What I mean by that is you look at Nero and Kirk, both can be had through the faction store. When I talk about dual faction grinding is level 14, 15, you're working to get to these. And Pan, part of the augment crew that you can get very, very early. So I'm in love with this one. It's one of the earliest ones that you can start maxing out with the you know, rainbow missions that focus on the various factions. This is very important early on to go with that Latinum one that I mentioned. Now, just to really quickly bring up the Latinum mission, I've said... Because of where I'm at level-wise, I've not spent a ton of time investing in it, but I want to go ahead and show you a good loadout. So I can put Eurydice up here, Eurydice as I sometimes like to call her, and then you're going to go and find some little bit more difficult offs. Riker is a great fit here, and then you have this very difficult one, Empathic, where there's only one officer. So the tricky thing about this one, you see I've not dumped a lot of trade XP or even upgrades into these officers is that it requires three epics, two of which are really hard to procure. Not everybody has Deanna Troy, not everybody has Riker, and if they are using Riker, they're probably using Riker in their Armada crews. However, this is a four out of four setup that will get you to that maximum critical chance while also hopefully giving you more, and once you can stack enough health stats, you can then get a significant amount of Latinum, and depending on how often that rolls, which I get one of these at least once a day, that can help give you some of that added bonus to your coffers. And I will admit, for a few months, I did farm this mission with Eurydice by herself at 60%, and it did help when it would end up popping. So something to consider, but this one's a little bit more difficult because of the officers that really kind of helped max that one out. Let's put the ones that y'all helped bring on the screen. And I did say that I would mention an uncommon real quick, and that is Sulu. The reason I'm mentioning him is because he has the pilot trait and low orbit flyby is a fantastic mission to give you quick lat as well as the axionic chips and away team currency. Now, obviously you're gonna need this to proc for you. RNG is something that we are all limited to when it comes to the away teams. However, there's a ton of value in it. And if you look at just having that singular officer, once again, bring up this image, bam, you see it's only 8,000 XP for the uncommon. So if you find a particular trait like this that goes along with the mission, pilot is something that comes around and has a lot of value that you can then use Sulu on. And many of you have probably upgraded him to an extent, giving him a decent amount of stats. Remember, uncommons do not get as many stats as something like a rare or an epic officer. So you wanna be careful when upgrading them and spending your faction credits. Is it justifiable? That's up to you based on what you're doing. But going through these, you see a lot of missions that can give you value in a lot of officers. It depends on what you're doing. The game has made it easier to kind of select and focus in on. But just to give you a kind of a quick list, Nero, Herc, Harold Marcus, Gorkon, Jarvanik, Fluffy. These are all, these six are primary epics that you're going to want to get to high levels because they not only interact with each other very well, but they interact with certain missions in particular. I want to bring up the Rite of Machka real quick. You see Chancellor and Warrior. Well, if I was to go and bring up Jarvanik, which I believe was, um, actually, I'll, I'll kill the screen real quick because Jarvanik is in my screen here in the background. I go bring up Charvenic real quick, and you look at her abilities upgrade. What do we have over there? We've got Warrior. So she also helps with that mission that can pair with As and give you more stats. So all of these can end up kind of having you know some overflow and some bleed, and that's what you really want to do. Synergy is what we probably call it if this was on a ship out in space, but because it's away teams, it's a little bit different. Synergy doesn't really exist in this. Um, particular run. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what to look for. Some of the most important missions as you're going through, and these missions cover about 40 levels of players. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, appreciate your help, appreciate your content. And if you have any questions about the game or what you can do to make the game better, comment section down below. Deuces, that's me. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. I'll catch you on the next one. We out here. An even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house.